Welcome back for this next drawing. What we're going to be doing is using our skills that we learned in the cutout and the chamfer and combining them together to make something interesting. So we start with our Y and then going to move into our V and we're then going to decide our book cover, so the shape. We're going to box in the top, a little bit wobbly there. We're going to make it look like a cube of ice and there's our basic shape. Now I'm going to outline in colour again just so you can sort of understand as we're dividing it up. And we're on this front face and on this back face just going to do the same thing. So whether it's a chamfer or a cutout we just make sure we apply it all to both sides. So first of all I'm going to say well on this line on the front I'm going to go halfway and halfway on the back. Also probably roughly a third of the way across, so if I divided this into three equal parts, like so, I'm going to do the same on the top here, and I'm then going to draw very carefully, because this ends up being a firmed in line, from there to the, there, and you can start to see uh, my chamfer take place. I'm also going to divide this back one up, and I'm going to place a bit of a cutout in here. So even though that's been divided into a third of this whole length of line, I'm going to divide it in half again and half again. And I'm also going to put a dotted line roughly so I know where halfway is because we're going to come halfway down. And I'm then going to join these lines down to the bottom. So if I roughly lined those up and we did some dotted lines, those ones are a little off. You can see that shape there. We're also going to bring those vertically down as well and you can start to see we've got our cutout shape and it's also reflected on the back here. So now it's just a matter of firming in the correct lines for our design. And I mentioned this before but it's sometimes helpful just to firm in the exact shape you're creating on the front face. And that way when you start to do the back you remember what the actual shape looks like. So you can see that if we start to go across, so it's starting to take its shape for us. And you'll notice it's looking like chamfer but it's also got part of a cutout. So we could do these dotted lines across or do them very faint so you can see those lines going across. And same on the top, we'll just do them faint for the meantime. But you can see how that starts to come across as well. So then we firm in our lines over here. Firm in these guys. And I might just bring that out a little bit because the perspective is a little bit out. Join that across. And you can start to see it almost looks like a little bit of a roller coaster carriage or something. And then we're going to bring this line down nice and sharp. Bring this one across nice and sharp, so over the top of our little dotted lines, and you can see that that's the shape there. We don't firm in any of this other back stuff because we actually don't end up seeing it. So now it's a matter of grabbing our pencils again. So grabbing our blue, applying it to our shape, and it will really start to show it off that we've actually made a cutout and a chamfer in the one object. And colour that in. Same again on the red like we've done before. We can just go along the axes just to emphasise the light that's bouncing off it in various stages as well. And we can go a bit darker in there. And you can start to see that shape. So we've got a cutout and we've got a chamfer. Again, for that last bit of emphasis, we grab our whiteboard marker. And we're going to go all the way around it. Just imagining if we were asked to cut it out with a pair of scissors. And again, being very careful here that we don't go all the way down.
then we just add our drop shadow and again we can try and make it reflect a bit of the shape so we can come out nice and flat until we hit the cutout which is roughly there do a little bit for the end we also want to bring this up out in here and it gradually sort of phases back in there so that we're roughly matching up our shape to the light shining off and so there you have a cut out and a chamfer turned into something interesting. Now, I've also got another couple here somewhere. A number of different drawings. I'll see if I can find them for you. Um, so this is another idea if you wanted to combine two cutouts. You could do something like that. You also might want to do something similar where you combine two chamfers and two cutouts. So the task here is to use cutouts and chamfers and combine them together or use one of them twice to make something interesting.